Welcome to STOT YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to explain Newton's laws of motion, how you can understand the three Newton's laws of motion better. Let's get started. First, Newton's law of motion states that an object will continue to be in a state of rest or in uniform motion unless it is acted upon by an external force. Now, what I want you to take note in this law are the two statements state of rest or in uniform motion. It is simply saying that if you do not apply force to an object then that object will be in a state of rest or what or in uniform motion assume that we have a book on a horizontal surface or on the floor or on, on the table any horizontal surface assume that we have a book on a horizontal surface a book this book will continue to be in the same position as it is it will continue to be on this table unless a force is applied on this book the first could be uh, push pull or any other type of force. Now let's say a force is applied to it, and let's call this first. Let's call it F A, which means the applied force. It will only exhibit motion if an applied force is added to this book. Without the applied force, then it won't move. The second thing you should also note in Newton's law is uniform motion. What uniform motion? What it simply means is that the body or the objects will continue to be in constant velocity the speed will not change the velocity will not change i'll give three illustrations on this let's say we have another horizontal surface this is a field there's a ball on the field and the ball is kicked kicking the ball it means you've applied force and we can actually say this is the initial force now the ball will continue to move the ball will move through a certain distance before it finally stops. What is supposed to happen according to Newton's law is that with an initial force, the book is supposed to move forever, but it won't. Why? Because there's frictional force between the surface of this ball and the field. There's a frictional force. So the frictional force is opposing this motion. That's why. Uniform motion won't exist here. Another example, let's say you have another horizontal floor, but here this is now an icy surface. You have a ball on an icy surface. An applied force. There was an applied force. It will move a further distance than the ball on the field. Now, because the frictional force between the surface of the ball and the icy surface. Is less than the frictional force between the surface of this ball and the field surface it simply means that if you have a low frictional force or if your frictional force if it tends to get to zero then it means your object will move forever if your frictional force gets to zero if the frictional force is assumed to be gone that means this ball will continue to move forever. That's what Newton's law. That's what it is simply explaining. A perfect example where there is no frictional, uh, where there is no frictional force or there is minimal frictional force is in space. There is no air in space, so there is no frictional force. Now let's say we have the sun. Assume this is the sun, and the earth is revolving around the sun. The earth has been revolving around the sun for a very long time. You agree with me? But there is no force that is actually making the earth revolve around the sun. It is just revolving. No force is being applied to the earth to keep it revolving. What happens here is that the, the earth is moving at a uniform motion. It is moving at a constant velocity around the sun. There is no friction in space. So that means there is nothing to resist the uniform motion of the earth around the sun so it will keep on moving forever that's what it means and since it is covering the same distance at the same speed then the time it will take to cover that distance too will be the same that's what gives rise to a year 365 days in a year another thing you should note in this law is that it is also called the law of inertia inertia simply means the tendency of a body to remain at rest or you can say inertia is the tendency of a body to resist motion that's all about newton's first law of motion let's talk about newton's second law of motion 
states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction of the force. It's talking about rate of change of momentum and a force. Rate of change of momentum of a body change in P over change in C and it is proportional to the applied force F. You can see force is equal to K change in P over change in C. Let K equal to 1. Then F is equal to change in P over change in C. If the momentum is given as a function of time, then force is equal to the P over the T. You should note these two formulas. Since we have F is equal to change in P over change in C, momentum is given as P is equal to mv. F is equal to change in mv over change in c. F is equal to if mass is constant, if the mass of the body is constant, F is equal to m change in v over change in c. F is equal to m change in v be written as v the final velocity minus the initial velocity change in v over change in c could be written as t but note that this c is actually changing c change in time you should note this formula too since acceleration a is equal to change in velocity over time that is v minus u over time then you can see first is equal to m v minus u over time and f is equal to mass times acceleration a you should note this formula too it's important that's all on newton's second law of motion now let's talk about newton's third law of motion it states that for every action there is an equal but opposite reaction. You should note that the action and reaction being mentioned here are actually forces. It means for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. It means the action and reaction force are equal, are equal forces, but they are opposite in direction. It means if you have, if you have a force F which is the action force then there will be a corresponding reaction force in the opposite direction and this would be a reaction let me give you an illustration let's say you have an horizontal surface and there's a book on the horizontal surface Since the book is not is not moving, it exerts a force downwards, and the force is called the weight force W. And that's given as mg. The mass of the book multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. It's exact the weight force, and since it is not accelerating downwards, then it has an opposite force called R, the normal reaction, and R is also given as mg. The weight force and the normal reaction are equal forces, but they are in opposite direction. If one of these forces is greater than the other, then the book would accelerate either upwards or downwards, depends. So we can say that the magnitude of the weight force is equal to the magnitude of the normal force and the magnitude of the weight force 
minus the magnitude of the normal force is equal to zero. So that means the forces are balanced, the forces are the same. That's basically all on Newton's third law of motion. Please like and subscribe to STUT YouTube channel if you want more video tutorials. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.